So, good morning and uh, welcome. This is my our last uh, lecture in the course. Okay. Um, today we are going to talk about authentication, but I also want to spend some time in completing what we saw just, uh, last week uh, with um, user facts and APIs. Okay. Uh, I mentioned today is the last uh, uh, class. We will have still the lab in the, this week, of course, on the Thursday. Next week, in these hours, we are not giving a class, but we are hosting a seminar. It will be a joint seminar between the, the course in English and the course in Italian by a company which is called Bending Spoons. Uh, it's quite a you know, famous company in Italy. They mainly develop uh, mobile apps uh, and also sometimes um, websites, and they will uh, come and tell us about uh, our, their technology and their choices for, uh, for scalability. Okay? So it could be an interesting topic. Uh, you, can, you can join, uh, of course, the class uh, here. Uh, same hour, same class at 10 o'clock here. So instead of, of, the, of uh, the normal class, there will be this um, external seminar. Uh, that that uh, you can you can read in the in the class schedule. Okay, and uh, uh, the last lab of last week, so next Thursday, Thursday 13, uh, will be a special lab devoted to uh, analyzing together or, or um, a, a possible, let's say, uh, methodology for uh, developing the exam project or all the project in general. So uh, it's try to, we try to put a everything together and say, okay, starting from some requirements, how do we break them up into the server side, the client side, the components, routes, and so on, try to do the, the planning, okay, to, together how to plan from a, uh, how to design and plan from an initial specification to the first, uh, let's say, organization of the code. So it would not be focused on code and programming, but on designing uh, the application. Uh, in, uh, we call that exam simulation because basically it's the first step you have to do for the exam, for the, uh, exam project. Okay, so that's for the for the end of the course. Um, today I I'd like first to um, have a look at the solution or say complete uh, implementation of uh, what we had. Uh, started last week, so let's open the uh, application, okay, uh, let me check, uh, I'm in the correct folder week 13, okay, so uh, in the, I committed this uh, yesterday night, in the week 13, you have two folders. Uh, one is called the with API, and the other is called with authentication that we'll see in the next uh, hour or next. Uh, right now, I'm uh, working the with API uh, project that, of course, we still have a client and a server as usual, okay, as we did last week. And uh, what I want to show you is to walk through the implementation of the different functionalities. So, um, last week uh, we uh, worked mainly on this uh, first page you remember just uh, uh, let me pick up the code uh, on the client uh, we have the components uh, for the question list okay uh, that is just rendering a questions uh, a list of questions and uh, sorry was where is up, okay. And we saw that the list of questions that is being rendered in the question list, okay, let me zoom a bit more. Uh, this list of questions was a local state in app, uh, but differently from, from before, this uh, list was not uh, fake, instead it was loaded from the server. So we initialized the list of questions to an empty list and then with the user effect to be run at component mount time, and since this is app.js, it will uh, run at the application mount time, we are asynchronously load, calling the load questions API 
to receive uh, the list of questions uh, and we use them to update the state uh, set questions. Okay? So this is what we did last week. Uh, and remember the load question is a, um, is a function that uh, we wrote in this api.js file that basically does a fetch, calls the API, okay, that we already implemented, okay, weeks ago on the server side. And uh, with a minimum of error handling, uh, it will return if everything is okay, it will extract the response uh, objects and return them to the caller. Okay, so this is the first time, the first uh, step, the list of questions. And then, starting from the list of questions, uh, the user can, you know, uh, click on these different links uh, that, uh, for example, have the URL like question slash one and so on. And according to these uh, uh, links, uh, we activate different routes uh, in app. So the uh, home page renders the list of questions and question slash number will render something about uh, that specific question. And we had, uh, of course, uh, uh, three different uh, uh, routes to render. One is the list of answers, one is the add, and the other is the edit, okay? And uh, uh, these three components, answers, answer form, and edit, answer, answer form, which is the three components to be rendered in these three routes, uh, are inserted inside the layout component, which is called the question component. So remember, it, we have a router with, a, with three nested sub-routes, okay? So this normal routing like we did before. The, the issue that we left uh, last week was where to put the state, okay? Who and when does it load the list of answers and the operation on these answers? So this is what, uh, what I want to show you today. So the question component uh, is just the... Uh, where's the return here, basically shows you some information about the question, the number, the, uh, the title, and the author, and something like that, and then delegates to the outlet uh, the rest of the page. Okay, so basically this, the question component only needs information about the current question. And we already have that, okay? The question component uh, receives the list of all questions and it knows also which is the current one. How does it know? It can extract it from the route. Question slash one. This is the question ID. So when we click on the link, we activate the route question slash question number. So the question component itself will know the list of questions, the full list of questions in the props uh, and can extract the number of the question from the parameters uh, of the router in this instruction. So I have the ID of the question, I have the list of questions, I can extract uh, the information about which question I'm going to show. And uh, well, it's basically some tests uh, to check whether the question list is empty or, or whether the, the ID is actually found in the list, uh, some sanity checks. Uh, and in the case, uh, there can be some, uh, some error page. But in a normal case, what we are doing is that we are filtering list of questions, finding the one with the, the, the number that we extracted from the router, and then extract uh, the first one or the only one that matches the filter. And that will be my question object uh, from which I will fill the page. Okay, so there's nothing new here in this component. The component doesn't know anything except uh, the list of questions and can extract the number to be rendered from the parameters of the route. Then the interesting part, so we don't, still don't have anything about the answers here, all the questions. The answers are in the outlet, are rendered in the outlet here, and we know that the easy part is the list of answers, which is in this answers component. You see that I am not passing any information to this answers component, here, there's no props being passed there because uh, it should uh, 
know about the list of answers, but I don't know them. Okay, so it will be the component itself to, to load this information from the server. The only information that the component will have is the current question number, but it can extract itself from the URL. In app, I don't know if I'm rendering this component, I'm, not, I'm still not in a route. So I can extract the question ID only from a component inside the route. So answers actually, uh, it's, a, it's just a container component. Uh, you remember it does nothing except delegated to answer table, the generation of the table itself, uh, and, uh, uh, and the button for, for, for adding. Okay? So the actual rendering of the answers goes to the answer table. Answer table is the component that really needs the question ID and can get it from the route parameters and the list of answers. The list of answers can only be loaded from the server by knowing the question ID. And so here again, we initialize the state and we set an effect for loading from the server the list of answers with a given question ID that we just extracted from the route, and then set answers to populate the list of answers. Okay, so this is what we are doing here. Um, remember, I'm using then, I'm not using await inside the user effect because I cannot uh, use an async function as an effect, okay? So for simplicity, I'm using the old syntax for, for processing the, the promise. And basically, that's it. So at, at this point, we have the list of answers. And uh, I, I don't think I modified in any way the rendering code down there. We are just mapping the list of answers into an answer row like we did before. We have all the information there. So instead, coming, instead of coming from the fake answers, right now, it's coming from the server. Okay. Um, Yeah, and this was load answers was again a get operation. So a simple fetch from the question ID of the list of answers. This was one of the APIs that we designed. And so what we see if we navigate the application is that uh, uh, if I, from the home page, I click on a question, I see that the server is asking, sorry, the, the browser, is asking, is calling API questions to answers. So this is the get that we are doing. And the response will be the list of objects, uh, of answers objects uh, uh, that match, uh, of course, this, uh, this question. Okay, so if we move to another question, we see that the server, the browser is asking again, every time we enter this page, uh, there's a new get uh, loading a list uh, of questions. We see that sometimes these gets uh, return, uh, uh, return 304 instead of 200. Uh, this is because uh, the um, Express server computes the response and knows that this response is identical to the one that you already had before. So it will tell the browser, you already have this because it's cached. Okay, so it's normal that the first time to actually get the answer, the response, and the other times uh, we have a response but it's not actually being sent by the server but basically is reused by the browser because the server recomputed the answers and checked with the previous, it has a, uh, also the server has a small cache, Express manages a, a small cache, and it will tell nothing has changed from the from the last time you asked. So the, the browser uh, could reuse it. It prevents you from reloading the same identical data over and over again. You just do a check automatically, it's just the caching mechanism that is working. Uh, you're just uh, uh, asking and checking whether anything is new or otherwise you are returning that. All of this is transparent to our APIs. 
So it's the fetch mechanism that is already doing this automatically. I'm not checking from this 300 or nor I'm generating this 300 code. It's automatically, you know, you know negotiated between Express and the fetch uh, function. Do, do I have a question? Yeah. Yes. No. Um, so I actually, thank you for the question. Um, this this rendering, this component is actually. Where is that? Ah, sorry, the API. Uh, is actually rendered four times. <laughs> um, in a, in the bug, in development mode. Okay, in development mode, like we are now running the application, every render is done twice. Because uh, uh, React is trying to double check on us uh, whether we are actually implementing components in a functional way. So it will run the component once, it will run the component twice, it will check the returns values with the same props and the same states, we compare the return, and if this um, renders differ uh, in some way, are different in some way, it will issue a warning. Say, okay, your component is not functional. So in development mode, uh, it's normal to expect that every component is rendered twice. No, that's, uh, uh, that's normal. Okay. In production mode, it will only be rendered once. But it's a sanity check that in development mode, it will help us to you know, anticipate possible problems, avoid them. This in general. In particular, we have uh, uh, an effect that is loading some data. So actually, the component is rendered twice, twice times two. <laughs> uh, the first time with an empty state. So the first time I'm going to the render code with an empty list of answers. Then the effect will trigger, it will run, and it will uh, update the state. Uh, that will trigger a second rendering, and this time with a real uh, list of answers. Once, and then it repeats again. It uh, rebuilds the components again with an empty state, it renders it, and uh, triggers the, um, the, um, the effect, and renders with the full list. So, so that's why we, you are always seeing twice the number of guests uh, than the number of components. This is for ju just in development mode, this is happening. We only see one get because the effect is only triggered once. Component is rendered twice, with first with the empty uh, list, and second as a, a consequence of the effect that updated the state. Hmm? So don't worry for that. Uh, it's another reason for doing the APIs well. So a get should be idempotent in your implementation should not modify anything in the database because it can, it can be called a different number of times. And you have, we have no control over that, okay, over the number of times a get is called. So we better be sure that a get that on the server doesn't have any side effect. Hmm? Okay, um, so this was the easy part, getting, and we have not, say, an automatic reloading. Uh, or, uh, when we go back to the home, you see that there's no uh, loading here of the information because the app component uh, is still uh, alive. So it doesn't need to be reinitialized every time. The app is still there. We already loaded the component once and it's still uh, active. So we, we are not changing it. We are only changing the the, 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 the rendering of app, but app itself is still alive, so we can go back. Uh, it does not reload the, uh, the list of questions. Only when we enter in a question, even if we enter the, the same question more than once, uh, in this case, uh, it will call, for, call the server. Hmm? It may not be efficient. You may want to, to cache it, but for the moment, of course, for, for performance reasons, maybe we already just read the state. Uh, there are... Um, query caching libraries that do that for you. So if you're thinking that you need to cache some results, uh, don't do it by hand. Uh, there's a nice library called uh, Tankstack Query, for example, that where you write down the queries that you want and it will refresh them automatically for you. But 
We don't know want to make it more complex. Okay, then uh, the actions. At this point, we are in a position, okay, to uh, have the list of, of questions and we want to implement these actions. Right now, uh, we have to throw away the, the previous implementation because it was only modifying the local state and we should uh, modify the remote state instead. So a vote app should run on the server. We already have an API on the server for doing that. It was a post that we implemented uh, some weeks ago. So we need to call this post when the user clicks on this button. So from the implementation point of view, it means that I have down there the answer row, and answer row contains answer actions. And we have this uh, vote up, uh, this, okay, arrow up uh, for voting. So uh, how, do you implement, do, how do I implement it? Uh, I'm calling a vote up property. Vote up is coming from answer actions here prop.votap and votap is an answer row. So it's coming from the component above me. Uh, you see that this votap uh, refers to a local function that I called on upvote. So what they want to do when the user clicks upvote and on upvote is uh, here. So actually, whenever, instead of, remember before, we were calling a function in app because at app managed, uh, previously was managing the state. Right now we are doing everything locally, okay? Because actually, we are not doing it locally, we are calling the server to do it. So there's a small callback here on the click of the arrow that calls the upvote answer, which is a function in api.js that will call the API for increasing the vote. Okay? This is just a normal, there's no, there are no effects here, there are no use effects, it's just a normal event handler. And what does this event handler do is two things, one is to increase the score on the server, and second is to refresh the list of answers because we know that once we modified the, some data on the server, immediately our local state is no longer valid. So we can either modify client and server optimistically by increasing locally the current state and increasing the server, or it's easier in the first implementation, we just throw everything away and reload the list of answers from scratch. It's just a quick API call. And it will come with my modifications and possibly with other modifications that uh, may have happened in the meantime. No? What we were referring before, when, when we have many clients, uh, every time we refresh, uh, we, of course, incorporate our modification and modification from other users at the same time. Uh, so I'm upload answer and load answers again. I already loaded the answers at component one time, and here, load answers, and I'm reloading them every time I click on up, on both up. Remember, this await, especially this one, is very important because up, up vote is a synchronous operation. If you forget this await, you are running the upvote and the load answers in parallel, basically. And so it's very likely that the list of answers that you receive will be the list before, uh, or maybe, depends on the race condition, uh, maybe before the, the data is being uh, you know, increased. So we want to serialize them. First increase, once the server is telling me that uh, the score is being increased, then I can reload it. Okay. Uh, it's an await, it's not a blocking operation, so the interface can go forward and asynchronously when the uh, server tells me that the vote has been registered, then I can refresh it, and when the refresh comes, I will update the state. At this point, the component will render again. What does upvote do? Well, simply, there's a post with a body 
called upvote. No? This is the interface that we decided a post on the answer ID slash vote with a body of upvote because there was implementation was upvote or downvote. Right now we only implemented the up one. So how does it work? If I click on vote, I see in quick uh, succession is what we see is uh, a post where I'm sending the operation upvote to this URI answers one vote. The request contains the command upvote and there's no response. There's no body, sorry. No, there's no, there is a response that doesn't have any body. No, the body is empty. But the response is there because the response is what uh, no, unlocks the promise. Uh, always remember to return something from the. And immediately after, you see a get, which is refreshing the list of answers. In this case, you see there is no 304. It's not being reused. It's being regenerated because actually some data has changed. And it's quite, you see, in the interface, it's quite uh, immediate, let's say. But we are going a full round, two round trip for, for, to the server, first to increase the number, and second to refresh the local state. We are not doing anything optimistically or locally. We are delegating everything for the server, and we decide to refresh. This is the simplest one. If you want to make it more complex, you can, but my suggestion is start with a simple implementation where the data is only in one place in the server. And so whenever you update something, update it there. Don't be afraid of refreshing, OK? Um, for avoiding making it too complex too soon. OK, so that was an easy action. And the same goes for delete. Delete is exactly, is exactly the same. Of course, it will call a different API because we have a on delete, they will call a delete answer, and then we'll refresh the list. And the only difference is that delete answer, of course, calls a delete without any request body, because it doesn't need it. But nothing, nothing special, nothing different, OK? So this was, these were easy, let's say, actions. Uh, so atomic actions where when I click on the button, I modify the server. And when I modify something on the server, I decide to reload. Uh, some of you could uh, say, but we are, the, you, we are, uh, you are duplicated some code. We have some code here for set answers. We have the same identical code for load and set answers. And also here, we have uh, some code for loading the answers. So another possibility could be just to reuse this effect by in some way forcing it to, to reload or to re-trigger. That could be a possibility. In that case, we should put a second uh, say variable here, second state variable, like I don't know, a counter. And every time we want to uh, trigger this effect that we can set the counter or increase the counter maybe. So it, 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 count, it counter that doesn't mean anything. It's only a value that I know when I, in which I know that if I change the value, the uh, answers will refresh. Hmm? It's more indirect. It's, well, basically it's one line of code less because instead of saying lot answers, I would say set state uh, to increase a counter. Or maybe a, a Boolean value like set state reload. Set reload true, and so it will be a dependency of the uh, our user factor. Question ID is slash reload. Whenever it changes, it will check if reload is true, then it will actually reload, and then set the state uh, reload to false. Okay like the gate that we saw, the gate uh, effect that we saw in the slides. Uh, it can be done if you want to save some, uh, some code, but actually it's making the component more complex because it's actually depending on something that happens inside itself. 
So we are mm, triggering something that normally should be triggered by ex outside uh, events. Uh, we are triggering it inside just for using the code. So mm, in, um, in the slides, there was a link uh, to a document, uh, to a tutorial, say when actually you can avoid using user effect, uh, and this is one of the cases. If you are worried about the application of, of this code, sorry, just write a very little function, local function here, and call it in the three different places. Okay, that's the easiest part, the easiest solution. Instead of uh, trying to trigger something that is already there, and it makes the, the life cycle of the component more complex. Right now it's a simple component, but you start adding uh, different functionalities. Don't create an effect when you, can, where, when you can do the same result, we can get the same result with a function or with a normal event handler, the code inside the event handler. Remember, effects, effect callbacks, and user callbacks, they are both running in the commit phase, not in the render phase. So, they both can be used for doing asynchronous operations or managing side effects. The only difference is that a callback runs explicitly on some user action, on delete, on, on click, and the effect runs on some data event, some variable change, some prop change, some, so it's some sort of an internal event. But apart from that, there are both callbacks they run in the commit phase, they can do, they run asynchronously and can perform side effects. Okay? So that, uh, don't abuse uh, the use effect, only use it when you really need it. That was the easy part, and the less easy part is uh, the, uh, the other two actions, add and edit. Add it actually easy, because it will uh, render a form, uh, the router that we decided was questions one or number of questions add. And so it's rendering an empty form with the information about the question number. So let's go to the code in app. In this route, questions, question ID, add. We are rendering simply answer form in mode add. It doesn't need any other information other than the number of the question that is already in the route. So what we see in answer form is that is extracting the question ID from the parameters and is rendering a normal empty form. I didn't do anything special here. I didn't touch this code. Uh, the only difference is, that, okay, when, what we do on the handle submit event. So the handle submit is when I click on add, and actually the same code is managing both the edit function or the add function. So let's look at add. Add is simply calling add answer, which you guess is an API that does a post. Posting question, question ID answer, question ID we already extracted from the route. And the answer is the answer parameter here is taken from the state from the form state, from what the user typed in the form state here. The answer object is actually an object that we build from the form state, from the you know, every uh, in control input as its own state for tracking it, for controlling it. And when the user clicks on submit, we put all of them in the, into a simple object and give it to the function add answer. Add answer is building the request body and <laughs> is also adding a score because the user cannot select its own score when uploading the, the, a, a, new, a new answer. So the score is being forced to zero. This is not. And after we add, we just go back one page to the list. So 
we were, remember the URI was uh, questions one add. When we get, navigate up one level, we will go back to questions one, which is the page with the list of answers. So at this point, we'll have uh, another list of answers. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, I, I have an error because, uh, uh, yes, I have a check in the server that the username is actually um, one valid username in the user table. So I, I, didn't, I, I cannot write a fake code. So, uh, for example, Manella was a valid email. So, okay. So I am going back. Going back means uh, re-rendering the list of questions and refreshing them from the server. So I actually don't have anything to do here. The important thing, again, is this await instruction. Add answers calls the post API. And I must wait until the server is telling me, OK, I, I succeeded in adding it. Otherwise, if the server is telling me that something went wrong, OK? I can, uh, for example, I have a set error here with a string uh, that shows a message at the top of the page, like it appeared before. OK, let's show it again. It's very crude. It's time invalid response uh, and the validation of the field from the server gives me an error. It should be formatted in a nicer way, but at least I'm showing that I'm catching the error. The error is coming from the server and it's telling me that this operation didn't succeed. Therefore, I should not navigate away. So we have a, an exception from add answer. Add answer throws an exception that prevents me from navigating away and sends me to other code where I'm setting an error message and I'm re-rendering the component with the error message with, without losing the data of the user. If you forget this await here, what happens is that you are setting the end answer, immediately navigating away, so you're destroying this form and all the data that the user typed, and after a while, this add answer would throw an exception. But this code is not live anymore. So you will get an error in the console that uh, an exception from a promise is uncaught. Uncaught promise from exception. It's an error that you will see often, very often. Often. Sometimes it happens. When we are not waiting, we are no, uh, launching a promise and not waiting for its uh, fulfillment or failure. And so the, when it fulfills, uh, well, we don't care about the result, uh, we just ignore it. It's a post, we, we don't have any meaningful result here to show or to process. But when it fails, the problem is that when the, 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 the promise fails, uh, the code throws an exception and there's no context in which the exception can be processed. There's no catch statement anymore because this component has been destroyed. So in the console, you will show that this was an uncaught ex exception from a promise. A promise throws, throws an exception, and you, and you didn't catch it. Not because you forgot the catch, but basically because, yeah, it may happen, but basically because you just destroyed the code. So there was this function, dies, is destroyed, and you still have a promise and that hopes <laughs> to return something, OK? So you will have, if we forget this, Await, you will just, uh, upon submission, when the user clicks on OK, it will immediately navigate away. Maybe the data will not be shown, will not be updated. You will have an, an error in the console saying the exception is not caught, but especially the user doesn't see the data and doesn't see any error message about that because we are not catching the condition. Okay? So we stay on the page until we are sure that the data is loaded. Otherwise, we, 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 if, the, if we are sure, then we can go away. 
Otherwise, we stay in the page, so we also, we also don't lose the data that has been typed by the user. They are, these are tiny details, of course, okay? But it's where everything <laughs> is put together. Um, and it's also, answer, uh, it's also important that the post from the server side returns nicely with the 200 that are, are called. So no, no, don't forget the re, uh, response dot, dot end, for example, because the response dot end is what uh, fulfills the, the promise on the client side. Okay, we should, of course, split your brain in two. Some code is running on the server, some code is running on the client, and they're communicated through HTTP. So a, a response of, with a positive code translates into a fulfilled promise on the client, of on the fetch instruction, okay? Um, okay, so this was for the addition of a new uh, code. What the only no, problem is uh, managing the error, so being sure to stay on the form until you're sure that it is loaded and uh, Okay, after that, you navigate there, everything is refreshed, no problem. The last uh, function, because the most complex one, is the edit. So, the problem with edit is uh, getting this data for initializing the form. Otherwise, it's identical to, 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 uh, to the add action. Uh, how can this component coming from this route, uh, one, edit one, know about uh, the data to be put here. So let's go back one second to the code. We are inside an answer row. Uh, where is that? Sorry, it's not answer form. Yes, it's the answer component. So we have the action, the edit action. That basically navigates uh, to this uh, URL that we decided last time. Questions slash question number slash edit slash uh, answer number. Sorry, what's here? Edit slash the ID of the answer. And it navigates here. It means that the router will match this route and call this edit answer form. So edit answer form is similar to uh, answer form. The answer form was for add and this was for edit. The problem is that this component uh, should know the current answer in order to initialize its own form. So there are two options about this. One is the A edit answer form can, could upload inf uh, download information from the server. So because edit answer form doesn't have any information here. The state with the list of answers was in answers. But answers is not an ancestor of edit answer form. They are siblings. They are not one inside the other. So, uh, the sec this form cannot use, uh, cannot receive any information that was inside answers. Unless we refactor everything, these are independent components. So an information that is currently available to answers cannot be used directly by this component. So this co but this component could know the question ID, it could know the answer ID. So it could call an API to get this information and populate the form itself. That's a possibility. There's another possibility, which is an option of the navigate function. It's an option both in link and in navigate. When in the router, in the React router, I'm starting a navigation from one route to another, I can send an object along with this navigation. So this object only lasts for this single link or this single click. But it's an object that is built on the page before the navigation 
and can be extracted on the page after the navigation. So that's a way of transforming, transferring information from sequentially shown uh, routes or components. In practice, how does it work? In practice, uh, uh, answer component here. In the navigate function, we are specifying the route to na navigate to and the second argument, which is an object with some options. These are options to the navigate function. If you go to the React router and see documentation of navigate, you see that you have, it has two parameters, the URI or the route and an options object. The object may have uh, several properties. One property that we are concerned is the state property. So we pass an object with a state property and the value of this property is simply a JavaScript object that's be, that is being transferred. Uh, technically, it's transferred to the browser history, to the location URL uh, in, the, in the browser history of a list of previous locations and so on. And every, each location may have its, a state property. So we are navigating to a new page and we are injecting into the browser history this object. Actually, a string that serializes the object. On the other side of the navigation, we are in edit answer form. We can extract this object. How? By using the hook use location from the React router that will give me access to the location object, and the location object has this state property that I just injected. Okay, so this page, this component, can receive the information from the previous page. So here, I have information about an answer. When I click on edit, I navigate into the edit component, and I'm also passing an object to that component that it will be able to extract. So I'm clicking here. You see it will, it's preloaded. There are no APIs running there. Everything is client-side. We don't need because oh, yeah, I already have this data. I give it to you. Um, and of course, uh, then it can use this information, this answer, to populate uh, the initial values of the form. Okay, and this is already, was already there when you had an edit mode, it was expecting an answer to initialize here the fields. From here on, nothing changed. No? So actually, uh, here we, we must call the answer form with the content of the answer that we want to edit, that we want to edit. Uh, this information, can be given by the previous component with the navigation instruction, or should be downloaded by myself, so I, use, I need to have a use effect that loads the information and then can pass the object. In this case, it's not needed. The uh, drawback of this is that this component can only be rendered right after the previous one, that specific previous one, that specific navigation. So if I try, for example, to, to enter this URL directly, it will fail. It's the same URL, edit two, but cannot initialize because the information about the initial values is not coming from the URL. It's not loaded by the component itself. It should come from the navigation, okay? While if I write uh, add, on the other hand, is working fine because all the information it needs uh, is already in the URL. Also here, if I write two here, it will the application is shown because everything that is needs uh, is computed starting from the information in the URL. Okay, so in some case when you are do, we are real, we are passing state information during navigation, of course we are binding or constraining that route to be called exactly with the navigation with the proper object, otherwise it will not work. 
Um, this is all, of course, only if we are concerned with users you know, clicking or typing directly a uh, URL, okay, because we are, we are not using, we are not navigating, when you are messing with the URL here, you are not using the router again, uh, anymore. You are just reloading the application with a new route from scratch, or you are reinitializing everything, okay? Um, and, but uh, like we said in, in our projects in the exam, we assume that the user is not uh, messing with the URL, and so we, are, we only have to consider uh, internal navigation. So don't worry about the, the test that they did have there, okay? It's, uh, it's, to be practical, during the exam we will never modify that, we will never do this kind of text, or reloading the application or changing the URL. We only check all the internal navigation actions, okay? And again, uh, after that, uh, if I modify something, uh, the edit button will simply call the put instead of the post, basically, okay? So the only, there's a very little difference uh, where the, uh, here, Yeah, this is the code for, for updating because I already have an answer to, to begin with and so it's calling uh, update answer with an ID which is being forced, cannot be selected by the user, a score that cannot be modified by the user uh, and so it must be the same as before, the user cannot edit its own score, it can edit the other fields and the other fields are coming from, from the form and the same trick, uh, we call the update answer, which does a put, in this case, instead of a post. That's the only difference between the two. Put for updating and post for creating a new one. And then await. If everything is right, uh, then navigate away. To the list. Okay, so you can, you can play with the code, there's nothing I just wanted to show you the different uh, actions uh, and uh, the points in which we must be careful. So this uh, navigation we state can be very useful to, to transfer information uh, to avoid reloading them. Just be aware that the data is being serialized into a string. So you can pass a simple JavaScript objects uh, but not uh, objects with constructors. So if this object could contain a a DJS object, for example, on the other side, it will not receive the DJS object, but just a normal plain object, and, uh, and you need to rebuild it, okay? Because it's not, we are not passing an object, we are serializing this object into the browser history, and then we are restructuring, extracting it again. Uh, the, the code doesn't show it, but it's happening. So if you have big inf objects or Complex objects, it's better not to do, not to pass them into, into the navigation state, uh, put them into a state, into a context, or load them from the server. Hmm. We have a question there? Uh, Sorry, D? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was lazy. <laughs> it was my last modification. So also here, we should have a, a try-catch uh, in order to... Uh, at basically to show the error, uh, because uh, um, the exception, if, if the disawait, you know, ensures me that if the update throws an exception, I will not leave this component. I will still be there. But the user doesn't know what went wrong. Let's try it. I change this. I did this modification and it went okay. And if the same code, I try to modify this email that we know it should be checked. No, in this case, it's not being checked. Okay, what you see is that uh, the modification didn't go through because, you see, let's say change it. It still didn't change because, of course, it was rejected by the server but the user doesn't, doesn't see any, any message, any error message, okay, in this case. 
Um, so uh, yes, we should do the exactly the same here. For example, like that. Oops, copy, paste, and see whether it's better. No, uh, because probably the the exception is not properly checked. Uh, we have when something like this happens. Remember that we have several layers. Okay. We have the code in the component. We have the code in the API. Uh, that is probably not checking, uh, catching the exception, not response, not OK. And so we, miss, we must trace back uh, this. Sorry, it's not add, it's edit. OK, this post uh, put. Uh, I, I did request something with the wrong email that should have been rejected, but I got nevertheless a 200 error code. So there's something wrong with the server, which is rejecting a request, but it's not giving me any error code. So let's go and check with the server, which is on the other side of the world. Server.mjs, I do the put. It's validating, validation results. We are okay because the parameters are there. Update answer. Ah, okay, probably. So the server route seems okay. So we go to the database and see that, uh, yeah, there's this mistake here. It was already in the first code, the first week's code. Uh, in this line, it should be a reject, not a resolve, because we are throwing an error. I, now that, I tell, that you are telling me, I, I, I corrected exactly the same error in the ad yesterday. Uh, yes? Yes? Yeah, so you, are, you want to do, so let me check first if this is working and then it runs, uh, I reply. Uh, so let's save the server and try again. Okay, this time the DAO function actually threw an exception that it was called by the route, express route, that it was transformed into a 500 code from the HTTP response, was received by the fetch, that threw an error, the fetch itself, and so we called the error in the API function that retrieved the exception that was called by the component and finally described this error message. That's it. Um, your question was, uh, uh, I could have validated this uh, uh, why the user was, was typing, okay? So you say, I'm, I want to enable the edit button only when maybe the, the, this address is correct or some. Of course, uh, validating a date or a string is easy because you can do it locally. You don't need any extra information. Validating an email that should be identical to one of the users requires either the component to know the full list of users, which is a big no, it's also a big security hole because you are publishing the list of users uh, to everybody that goes into your website. No. And so it requires uh, at every time the, the user types something to check on the server and say, okay, is this okay? Is this valid or not? You're doing a, a quick uh, get and saying, is this valid or not? But it's not new. It's not new. If you go to Google and you are typing anything, to any website, it's already doing that. If you are typing something, you see that every time you type a letter, the network panel is triggered. 
and in particular, search equal Q equal to what you're typing. So at every keystroke, you're doing get. Actually, there's some sort of uh, uh, history so that if you are typing too fast, uh, it will uh, wait until uh, you are some milliseconds of, of pause to avoid just uh, bombarding the server. But it's a, it's a no normal implementation when you need to validate or to respond in real time to what the user is typing, you are at every character making an API call. Yes? Yes? Uh, resolve should be the last instruction, last useful instruction. After resolve, you should not have any, any, uh, a promise body should not, should not return any value. The return value from a promise callback uh, is unused. So okay. After, after the resolve, uh, basically, it, it's lost because what can you modify? You can modify some local variables of a function that is going to be destroyed. Uh, yes, but uh, you cannot do anything useful there. So it's better not to do anything. Okay. Think of resolve as a return. Because otherwise you can do something, but you don't, uh, oh, it would be very bad to have side effect to, to closures. So, uh, because you don't know when it will be executed. Of course, the resolve will be as, as caught, um, transferred asynchronously. So the code of the function will be ended, and uh, the resolve schedules the return. But uh, technically, you can write some code after resolve, but it doesn't. You shouldn't do anything useful with that. OK. So uh, you can use this uh, as a simple template also for your implementation of the get and uh, put and edit and so uh, the simple cases. OK. Uh, so there was some stuff to show. That's why I decided to comment uh, some existing code instead of writing them together uh, for provision of time, basically. Okay, so um, now let's move forward uh, with the next topic. Let me make, cut the video. <laughs> 